The Creator was directed by Gareth Edwards and written by him and Chris Weitz. This is his first film since Rogue One. That's a really long time to not make a movie. To make a Godzilla film, a Star Wars film, and then nothing for such a long period of time, I can't imagine it was easy to get this movie off the ground. The film takes place against the backdrop of a war between humans and robots with artificial intelligence, where a former soldier finds a secret weapon, a robot in the form of a young child. With a reported production budget of $80 million, the creator is one of the most expensive original films of the year. It's extremely difficult to come across a movie like this anymore. A movie that doesn't have any ties to any existing IP. It's not based off of a book, another movie. It's not a sequel. It's a brand new thing. It has a strange title that not everyone understands immediately. Like I can imagine, there were probably a few conversations where people in suits behind desks asked Gareth Edwards to call this movie The War of the Future or something like that. And seeing this movie has made me not just want to do a typical movie review. I'll talk about the film, of course, and my thoughts on it, but I really would like to discuss the state of original filmmaking in Hollywood, how we perceive it, and how it actually is. And if there's anything we can do to change it. But first off, let's talk about the creator. This movie is visually dazzling. You've heard everyone say that, and it is true. If the budget really is $80 million, that's astonishing. It looks like a $150 million movie easily, and I can say that's one of the best compliments, if not the best compliment, you can give a movie is that it looks far more expensive than it was because that means they stretched every dollar. Cinematographers Oren Soffer and Greg Frazier, Frazier of course coming from Dune and the Batman fame, have shot a remarkable looking movie. It feels like 75% of the movie took place at Blue Hour and despite clearly extensive CGI, much of this movie is in camera, and it truly is gorgeous to behold. Gareth Edwards and his team have crafted one of the best looking films of the year. And once again, Hans Zimmer's score is beautiful. He knocks it out of the park as usual. John David Washington is excellent as Joshua, a complex leading man. In fact, there's an opportunity in the movie for him to have a save the cat moment where someone is threatening to execute a dog for information, and he does not stop them. He just finds the information on his own, and the act of finding the information stops the person from executing this animal. He easily could have been like, no man, that's going too far, don't do that. You get your save the cat moment and suddenly you like this guy. But he's not like that. We kind of settle into him as our protagonist because at the start of the movie you understand that he's gone through a really horrible event and that's why he's so jaded and why he's so guarded, and it all makes sense. But once the real meat and potatoes of the movie starts going where he has to protect this child, that's where you really start to see below the surface for him. He's a really excellent protagonist, and John David Washington is great. You've probably also heard this as well, and that is that the storytelling in the film does feel like a lot of other movies. Sometimes things feel very familiar. There's District 9, Elysium, Akira, and a host of other movies that feel kind of like this movie. There's a sense as you watch it that you've seen a lot of this before, and that can sometimes take away from the experience. Obviously, there are comparisons to Blade Runner, too. It's extremely easy, though, to do that when you're reviewing a movie, to be like, well, that just seems like this and this and this, and that's kind of what I want to talk about, because it is the biggest downfall for the creator. There's a section of the movie, mostly in the middle, that does kind of feel like a scrambled mixture of other movies, and it affects this one poorly. And as a result, a movie that is technically an original film is getting some rather harsh reviews. Yes, it's mostly positive. Everyone can figure that out with all the sites with the letters and numbers that tell you how to feel about a movie. But if you actually read the reviews, most people are zeroing in on the fact that it's copying off of a lot of other movies. That's why I want to talk about the state of original filmmaking in Hollywood, because yes, it is incredibly difficult to get a film made of this budget that's not related to an IP, and you can't go to somebody who has money or a studio that has money and say, I can guarantee a return on your investment because you don't have a proven roadmap to show them why they should give you money. And so what happens when you're in that scenario? Well, if they're willing to listen to your original idea, then you have to come at them with a bunch of comps, comparisons, to other movies that have proven successful and say it's this meets this, and this is why you should uh, listen to my idea, because look how Blade Runner is, like, beloved. 
Look how Akira is beloved. Look how many people liked District 9. Look at other movies about lone, mostly silent badasses who have to transport a child somewhere and protect them, like Logan. Then their ears perk up and the wheels in their heads start turning and they say, oh my god, yeah, you know what? People do seem to like those movies. Here's some money. So even when you try to make an original thing, you oftentimes have to compare it to other things that already exist so that you can get the money to make your movie. And that is why even in big budget original films, you sometimes do see them feeling like other movies. Because it's incredibly hard to get money to make a movie and that's it, that's the end of the story. There is no mystery, there is no Hollywood is out of ideas, there is no originality is dead. It is all down to will we pay for it? Because if we don't, they won't wanna make it. So you gotta prove even with ideas that are original, that it's kind of like something we'd pay for. This, of course, is not always true. There are examples of very unique original films that happen, but most of the time, this is the case. This does not count for indie films because it doesn't cost as much money to make indie films, so the investment is not as dire. There's not as high of stakes with people who are investing five to $20 million in a movie, then 80 to 150 million. There are only a handful of filmmakers that are given permission to make original films that are very expensive nowadays, and you guys know who all of those filmmakers are. It's David Fincher, it's Quentin Tarantino, it's Christopher Nolan, Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg, sometimes James Mangold. I mean, look at Ford v. Ferrari. The guy can really make a damn good movie. Paul Thomas Anderson, of course, Wes Anderson, these fucking icons are the only people who are allowed to actually do that. So when someone like Gareth Edwards, who has directed gigantic movies before that are, of course, IP, excluding monsters, gets a chance to make a movie like The Creator, it doesn't surprise me that it feels like a bunch of other movies. Now, you could also say that I'm just defending storytelling that feels like it's very derivative of other things, and maybe that's the case. I obviously was not involved with the making of The Creator, but I do think that in general, that's really the answer. It's not that Hollywood's out of ideas. It's not that originality is dead. It's that it's incredibly hard to convince people with money that something that is truly original will result in us paying to see it. Because that's, of course, the end game here. We've got to go see these movies. So do we want more original movies? Then we should probably go see the creator and support it because it is a very good movie, although it is like a lot of other movies and I, I agree with those criticisms, but I was very entertained by it and I thought that especially the third act was fairly riveting. Guys, I could probably talk about this for like two hours and I do think that there's a lot more to be said about it. Maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. I've done a variation of this already on my channel in a video called Why Don't They Make Them Like They Used To? And it really does come down to whether or not we're willing to to pay to see them. But this summer is interesting because a movie like Oppenheimer, which is a true story biopic, rated R, three hours long, did incredibly well. And Barbie, technically an IP, but completely taken in a different direction, also did very well. And that was an example of a, a visionary filmmaker in Greta Gerwig taking a story that could easily have been some Hasbro movie <laughs> and going the complete different direction and people supporting it wholeheartedly, which is very encouraging. I do feel like we're entering into this phase where the A24 aura that surrounds really great independent movies is, is really starting to break through into the mainstream. And a lot of people who do go to the theater are expecting originality like that. And there's not a lot of options for it. So I'm very excited to see where next year goes, especially with big movies that aren't necessarily based off of anything, or if they are, they're taking a lot of major risks. That's what I want to do with my movies. If I get to make more after Shelby Oaks, I don't want to just make movies that feel like other movies. I really want to try to do things that haven't necessarily been done before, which is incredibly difficult. And that's one of the reasons I'm, again, so grateful that you guys supported Shelby Oaks, because I don't know how I would have been able to make it without you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. If you did see The Creator, I'm curious to know what you thought of it, and also my thoughts on the state of original filmmaking in Hollywood. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.